I have to share this crazy thing that happened to me about a year ago. My parents had gone to some Bible conference out of town, and I was stuck at home by myself. I'm James. I'm a shy 17-year-old guy. I'm not into socializing, so I don't have a lot of friends. That's probably why my parents didn't worry about leaving me at home alone. The only guy I talk to is the old man next door, Arthur. He owns the place, and I mow his grass for saxophone lessons. Yes, it's an odd friendship, but it works. Okay, so this one night I'm doing my usual thing late night saxophone practice. Parents are away, so why not? It's dead silent outside, and the notes are probably echoing like crazy. But hey, music is my only escape. Then, out of nowhere, I get this creepy vibe. It's dark as heck. And suddenly I notice the motion sensor light outside going nuts, flicking on and off like crazy. My first thought was maybe it's just a raccoon or something. But then, when I look through the window blinds, there's this old guy crouching in the bushes. What the actual heck? My heart is doing the cha-cha, and I'm like, is that Arthur? I can't see his face, just the silhouette, but it feels off. Why is he hiding in my bushes in the middle of the night? I'm not a nosy dude, but this is messed up. The guy is trying to hide, and I'm thinking, what is he up to? The whole night, it's like some horror movie. The light keeps doing its flickering dance, and I can't shake this feeling of dread. I try calling the police, but then I think, am I overreacting? Maybe it's just some dumb prank. I'm stuck between fearing for my life and being the paranoid guy who cries wolf. The whole night I was freaking out. Every time I looked out, the old guy was still there, lurking in the shadows. The sounds outside made it worse. Twigs snapping and leaves rustling. Not sure if that was just because my senses were extra heightened. I'm thinking, did Arthur go crazy? Is he trying to sneak into my house? Finally, just before sunrise, I check again and the shadowy figure is gone, but the garden is trashed. Now here's the kicker, the twist that's got me questioning reality. So, Arthur casually drops this bomb during our next sax lesson. He mentions his late wife's favorite flowers, this delicate bloom that I accidentally mowed over while doing his yard. The dots connected, and I'm left wondering if Arthur's hiding in my bushes because I messed up his late wife's flowers. Is this revenge for the accidental garden massacre? Or am I being paranoid? I can't even be sure it was Arthur. I'm terrified because if it was Arthur, I don't know if he wants to hurt me or what. The sax lessons have become awkward now, and every flicker of the motion sensor light sends me into a flat spin. Did I unleash some horror by accidentally destroying a memory Arthur held dear? So there you have it, folks. My weekend of horror, saxophone lessons turned terrifying, all because of some flowers I didn't even know were important. Is Arthur out for revenge, or is it just my scared imagination playing tricks? I just can't make sense of this. I'm Derek, a 19-year-old marketing student and I've got to share this insane thing that happened at my parents' place. My parents had built me my own pad above their garage and they'd asked me to keep an eye on the house while they were out. The basic instructions I was given was to close the curtains and switch some lights on when it got dark. The typical parental request, right? Little did I know, it would turn into a night I'd never forget. So there I was, in the room above the garage, headphones on, jamming out to some Metallica. As the night fell, I totally ignored my parents' advice to close the curtains and turn on some lights. Who needs that when you've got Enter Sandman blasting in your ears? But then something caught my eye. A flicker of light from inside my parents' house. I pulled off my headphones and squinted, trying to make sense of it. The house was supposed to be empty, just me and my tunes. I ducked down, peeking over the windowsill, heart pounding like crazy. There, in the dimness, I saw it. A flashlight beam dancing around inside my parents' place. Panic set in, and I couldn't look away. Someone was in there, and there sure as hell wasn't supposed to be. Now here's the part where my instincts kicked in. Did I call the police? Nah. Did I grab a weapon? Not really. 
Instead, I did the dumbest thing. I could access my parents' house from my pad, so I crept down the stairs trying to be the hero, I guess. As quietly as I could, I opened the adjoining door and stepped into the hallway. I could hear shuffling like someone was moving around. I peered into the living room hard in my throat, and there in the dimness I saw someone, a figure hunched over going through stuff. The fear hit me like a ton of bricks. I should have called the cops, but my brain was on vacation. I hid behind the hallway wall, praying he wouldn't notice me. My hands shook and I could barely breathe. He rummaged through my parents' stuff, completely oblivious to my terrified presence. As I cowered in the shadows, my heart thumping so hard it seemed louder than the music I had been listening to. The intruder froze, slowly turning his head towards me. And then, he grinned. A wicked, twisted grin that sent chills down my spine. He didn't seem like some random thief. It was someone who knew me, someone who reveled in the terror they were causing. I booked it out of there, heart pounding, and called the cops from a safe distance. When they arrived, the house was empty. No sign of the intruder, just the lingering feeling of fear that refuses to leave. So here I am, shaken to the core. Someone broke into my parents' house and I can't shake the feeling that they did it just to watch me squirm. From now on, when my parents ask me to do something, I'll do it. And I'll never underestimate the horrors that lurk in the familiar shadows. This incident took place a few weeks ago. I'm 24 and I've been trying to get my life back on track. The job I'm working at barely pays the bills and I've had a few run-ins with the law and, well, maybe partied a bit too hard over the last couple of years. My place is dingy and I don't have much furniture, but I am slowly but surely getting my life together and proud of how far I've come. A few months back, some friends and I got into a fight at a pub we regularly hung out at. One of my friends decided hitting on some guy's girlfriend was a good idea, and in my inebriated state, I was somehow thrown into the mix. Long story short, cops got involved, and it was a whole mess. I decided that it was time to turn my life around, so I quit the partying and was now living a sober life. One Friday night, a friend of mine had invited me to his place to just hang out. I was too keen to go, but figured I'd go for a bit, just to show my face and leave. Turns out there were a couple of people there and I met some random girl and we instantly hit it off. A couple of days later I asked if she wanted to meet up. I was looking forward to our evening out because trying to do the straight and narrow was getting a bit boring. It was while I was getting ready I heard a knock at the door, or more like a banging. It was a bit strange because I never got visitors. I was too embarrassed to show anyone my shitty apartment, so I wasn't expecting anyone. I will admit that I was slightly irritated. I was in a rush to get ready for my date because we were meeting up at the local diner at 8 p.m. and it was already 7.40. I didn't have time for visitors. I pulled the door open with admittedly a bit of force and looked out. No one was there except for a bottle of wine on the floor with a note saying, sorry, can't make it tonight. Weird, right? I mean, how did she even know where I lived? I brushed it off, thinking maybe she asked someone or just got lucky, but I was seriously disappointed. Now here's where things go south. I'd stopped drinking after the whole cop debacle, but I figured I'd been stood up, so what's the harm in one glass of wine? Famous last words. A few sips in, and it hits me. Something's off. The room starts spinning, and I feel like I'm losing control. That's when the nightmare kicks in. The walls close in, shadows dance around, and I'm hit with this overwhelming fear. My mind's a mess. I'm stumbling, trying to make sense of what's happening. The wine? It had to be spiked. Panic sets in, heart pounding like a drum. I'm scared out of my mind. As I collapse onto the floor, everything blurs. I can't trust my own senses. What was in that wine? Who left it at my door? Questions swirl, but I'm too paralyzed to find answers. In my haze, I manage to crawl to the note by the bottle, and there, in shaky handwriting on the other side of the note, it reads, You should have remembered me, Chris. My heart stops. So there I am, lying on the floor of my dingy apartment, 
No clue who drugged me or why. Then it hits me. The random girl. The wine. It was all a setup. Either she wrote the note or it was someone else. This person knew where I lived and they wanted to mess with me. The fear skyrocketed as I realized I'd walked right into their trap. And here's where it gets even worse. Lying there, trying to piece things together, unable to move, I hear footsteps outside my door. Heavy, deliberate footsteps. A deep voice leaves a threatening message. I will be back, but next time you won't hear me coming. My heart stopped. The fear intensified as I realized someone has been watching. Someone drugged me, and now they're promising a return. I'm left on the floor, paralyzed with terror, haunted by the unknown threat that lurks. I still don't know who it was. The girl I'd met had vanished, so I figured she must be involved somehow. It could also have something to do with the bar fight from a few months back. You never know when a seemingly innocent night can turn into your worst nightmare. Everywhere I go, I'm constantly looking over my shoulder. I make sure my doors are firmly locked at all times and I haven't touched a drink since. One day I hope to figure this mystery out.